Hey everybody, it's a Lefty Knitter Podcast. My name's Aquila and this is going to be a tutorial. I have talked about making these scrubbies for a long time on this channel. I love this Red Heart Scrubby. I can't vouch for any other um, of the scrubby yarns because I've actually never bought any other ones. So first let's talk about the yarn. We're going to be, well, I'll show you what we're making. We're making a scrubby. Now this is about the size of my hand. I didn't measure this. I should. I'll put that on the screen how big they are. But this is the size I like to make. Um, but you can make it as big as you want or as small as you want using my instructions. Okay. So we're going to be making these. You're going to need a crochet hook. I'm using a 5.5 millimeter or an I9. I love my tulip hooks. I use these all the time. You will also need a darning needle and a pair of scissors. Okay. Um, actually, let me just get them out right now. I have them in my, these are the oldest pair of scissors ever. I have buttons in there too. Okay. Now this scrubby yarn comes in solids, which are a hundred grams and they are, sorry, hundred grams, 3.5 ounces, and they're 92 yards. You can get around six to seven, maybe more scrubbies with the solid yarn based on like this size. These are about 15 grams a piece. Okay, so if you do the math, you know. Then they also come in variegated yarns. So this is a Christmas one. They're smaller though, you don't get as much. So you're getting 85 grams and 78 yards. So you get approximately five to six scrubbies in the variegated color. I just wanna show you guys a few examples. This is obviously a solid, but I wanted to show you some, like I was gonna, like these are black, these are really hard to see sometimes. And yes, this yarn, because it's got all these eyelashes, it can be really difficult to see what you're doing. But no fear. No fear. I promise you can do these. These ones are ones that have been through our washer and dryer multiple times. You can see this one's kind of small. This edge is coming off, but it's okay. These go in the wash and in the dryer. We use them on our cast iron. We use them for everything. Okay? So these are pretty old. We've had these ones a long time. All right, so if you've never crocheted before, I'm, go I'm gonna use very simple terms and, I'm and it's the same stitch really for the whole scrubby. All right, I promise it's not difficult. The difficult thing is trying to see the uh, stitches. It's gonna be the hardest part, okay? I'm just gonna leave everything scattered. So here is really essentially the pattern. I will post this below. You can increase this and make them bigger. You can do less rows to make them really small. It's totally your choice, all right? So you got to start, though, with a chain and a slip stitch. So you're going to leave a little bit of a tail because you need to weave that in at the end. I've made a mess of that ball of yarn. <laughs> I apologize. All right, so I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail, and we're going to make a slip knot. So essentially... You're making a loop. I'm left-handed, so if this is all backwards, I apologize. You make a loop, and you pull a loop up, and that's what you put on your hook, okay? And then you just kind of pull it tight, and you have a tail, and you have your working yarn. With your working yarn, you're going to chain five. So one, and you don't have to make them super tight, two, three, four, and a chain is just wrapping over and pulling it through. And there's five, okay? So you have five chains. So hard to see what you're doing. If you make six, it's okay. If you make four, it's okay, as long as you can get into the ring that we're gonna make, okay? So then you're gonna take and you're doing a slip stitch. So you're going back to the first essential chain that you made, find any leg that you can, you put it in the leg, you do a wrap around, and you pull through both. Oops, except I pulled through. I'm nervous, my hands, I don't know why I'm nervous. This is so silly. Okay, you pull through one and you pull two through. And essentially now you have your tail here and your working yarn are together and you have like a ring. Okay. Now you're going to be doing, you're going to be making essentially 10 half double crochets, but the first half double crochet is a chain two. So you wrap over one, pull it through, wrap over two, and that's your chain two. So that's your first half double crochet. Now to do a half double crochet, you can Google this. This is English terms also, not um, British or European terms. 
You're going to be going into your circle here, your ring, and you're going to be capturing the tail as you go. So just keep your tail along with the edge of the ring. So do a half double crochet. We're going to do nine of these, making a total of ten um, stitches. Oh, you know what I didn't bring for people? I have one on my... I'll show you. Okay, some people might want to use a stitch marker to mark the beginning of round. I've done it so many times. I don't mark it. Also, if it's not perfectly at the beginning, it's a scrubby. It will be fine. I promise you. Okay, half double crochet is you wrap around your hook once. Okay, then you're going to put your hook into your ring. You're going to wrap the yarn again around your hook and you bring pull it up. You have three on your hook. Okay, this is a half double crochet. Now you're going to wrap one more time and you're pulling it through all three. One, two, three. The half double crochet is what you're doing pretty much the whole time for this pattern. I've looked at scrubby patterns on like they have patterns on here for these scrubbies. I don't like them. They're too floppy. I like this hook size. I like the tightness I get. You might have to change your hook size depending if you're tighter or looser crocheter. Okay. We've done one. We're going to do not um, 10 nine total half double crochets to give you 10 stitches. So we've done one, which is our chain and one half double. So two. So I'm going to count from there. So this is three. Wrap over, go through, grab it. You have three, pull through all three. Okay. So that's three. And you're capturing this tail every time you're going through the ring. All right. This will be four. Wrap, pull it through, four. Five, six, seven. If you're losing your ring here, you can push these over a little. They're a little, they get stuck. It's hard. This yarn is tough. Okay. I forgot what I just said. Six or seven. Ah, we'll make it up. <laughs> I think that was six. So seven. It may have been seven already. Eight. nine okay and ten now you're not going to capture that tail anymore because that tail is now captured through your ring okay i'm not chaining i'm not slip joining i'm not doing anything that was row one i'm not doing um anything special now if you want to use a stitch marker uh, you need an, a stitch marker that opens or like one for crocheting. I have this one here It's like a split ring you can put that on there Okay, you can put it on Essentially kind of marking your first round you're gonna do it after you do your first one. Okay, the row two is two half double crochets in every stitch. Okay, this is the hard part, right? Because you have to kind of find your stitches. They're kind of hard to see. They make Vs on the top. They're hard to they're hard to see, okay? Don't don't be frustrated with that. If you go into the same one 3 times, it's okay. It's it'll be it'll be okay. So essentially, we're increasing from 10 stitches to 20. So we're going to do half double crochets again. So you wrap it over, you do one, and here's where you would mark it. If you are nervous about making sure you get the right amount, you can mark it. I just stuck that in my teeth and I shouldn't have done that. So there essentially is my first one, okay? I'm probably not going to do this for every row because I don't, I don't need it. Also, if you go over or under, it's going to be okay. So there was one, and you're going to go into that same stitch. So one... And finding it, like I said, is hard, but it's it's going to be fine. So there's two. Here's like our next V here. So in these 10 that we just made in round one, we're going to do two in each one. So three, four. Okay, just going to keep going. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, 
9, 10. By going into your stitch below twice, it's increasing. That's what we're doing, okay? 11, 12, 13, 14. So say you miss one, right? Say you only do one and one and two and one. You just make it up at the end, okay? These are not for perfection. I forgot what I was at. 14, I think. 15. 16. 17. 18. Did I do too many? Possibly. I have two left. So I'm just going to do one in each. It's going to be fine. I think I did 11 when I did that first row. So there's 19 and 20. Again, they're, they're not going to be perfect. It's not like you're making a sweater and if you make a mistake, you're going to see it. You're not going to see it and you're scrubbing dishes. So you would essentially take this marker out, but you can do your first stitch in it if you need to. So now we're back to the beginning. We're going to start round three. We're increasing only in one of the stitches this time. So it's going to be a two half double crochet in one and then one half double crochet in the next stitch. So across two stitches, you're doing an, one increase and one regular. Okay, so we're going to do that. So we're going in one. So essentially, we're going to have 30 stitches at the end. It's multiples of three. So the first one and two are in the first st same stitch. If that's easier for you to remember, one and two are in the same. And then three goes in by its own, and it's, that's a multiple of three, if you need to remember. That's kind of how I do it. Okay, one, two, three. So now we're going to do four and five. Okay, those are in the same. Six is in its own. That's the multiple of three. So the next stitch, you know you're doing an increase. So one, two, that's six. So seven, eight, nine is the multiple. Okay, just keep going all the way around with that same repeat. 10, 11, 12, 13, this one's an increase, and 14, 15, we're halfway there, 16, 17 are together, 18, 19 and 20, And then 21 is a multiple of 3. 21. 22 and 23 are in the same stitch. Oops. 21. Or 22 and 23, sorry. 23. And then 24. You're just going to be feeling for it, right? That's the part. So 24. You're kind of feeling for that next stitch. Okay, so you can kind of find it. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Mm, I think I went below it, but that's okay. It'll be fine. And then 30. I didn't mark the row before so I'm not exactly sure if I was there we'll mark it for the people let's do the next one we'll mark it okay so that was row three we have 30 stitches now okay row four is two increases in the first and then two half double crochets in the, the next two stitches so across three stitches it's going to be one double crochet two double crochet three and four so it's multiples of four to get us to 40 because I always just count to the number. As long as you count to the number and then start the next 
start the next row, quote, <laughs> it'll be fine. You're increasing in one and two, three and four. Okay, so we'll do one and put a marker in and see how close I am. Don't use your teeth, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, one and two. Those are our increases. Three and four are just single half double crochets. So multiples of four. Okay, five, six. Seven and eight. Sometimes it's hard to find it. But again, this yarn is hard to see. And with any like artsy yarn. Okay. Eight. Nine. Ten. I like this because it gives a pretty dense fabric. Eleven. And twelve. I felt like some of the patterns from the, the labels, it was too floppy, and I didn't like how floppy they were. Okay, that was 12. This is the increase, 13, 14, 15, 16 is a multiple 4, increase, 17, 18, Two double crochets, 19, 20. We're halfway there because we know we're going to 40. Increase, 21, 22, single half doubles, 23, 24. Increase, 25. Same stitch, 26, 27, 28 is a multiple of 4. You're going to do your increase. 29, 30 is in the same stitch, 31, 32. 32 is a multiple. Got two more repeats. 33, 34 are the increases. 35, sorry, my ball of yarn, 35, and 36, 36 is the multiple, let's see how close we are, okay, increase, 37, and 38, and then 39 and 40, and then we're at the end of the row, so 40, 39, sorry, and stay with me here, 40. We're, we're right on. And if we weren't, and you're not using a marker, I know I've went past it by accident. It's going to be fine. You might have a little lump. It might look a little wonky. Again, are you that worried about your dishcloths? Now, if you're selling them, maybe you want them to be, like, perfect. But I'm not. All right, so last row. Row five is um a multiple five we're going to go to 50 stitches you're doing an increase in one and two three four five so they're all half double crochets so it's increase one two three four five okay so we're just going to do one more round and then i'll show you how i finish it off to get the cleanest look that i like again you don't you don't have to do that you won't have to do that if you don't want to these are your scrubbies you can do what you want so let's start row five Increase, one. Row five is my favorite because multiple of five are very easy to remember. All right, that was two. I know I conventionally don't hold the hook like everybody else, but all of us crochet a little different. So four and five. And scrubby yarn doesn't roll like go through your fingers really well, so I don't do any of the tensioning. I, I just hold it loose. So that was five. That was the first repeat. Okay. And when you do this over and over again, you're going to really start to feel where those stitches are. That's six and seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Multiple of five. Increase. 
11 and 12 are in the same stitch. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, multiple of 5. We're increasing now. 16 and 17 are an increase. 18, oh, 17. <laughs> No, that was right. 16, 17, sorry. 18, 19, and 20. Multiple of 5. 21 and 22 are in the same stitch. 22. 23. I know I don't have to show the whole thing, but I want to show you that you can make one of these in less than a half an hour. Whoops, I did not go. It's okay. Oh, now I forgot what I was, but you can kind of see that was a double. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So we're going to increase. 26 and 27. 28. 29. And 30. Now, if you keep your stitch marker in, you'll know how accurate you are. I'm not worried about that. We're increasing 31 and 32. We're in the same stitch. Sorry, I need more yarn. 33. Certain hooks are going to work better with this yarn too, just so you know. 34. 35. Some will stick a lot. I feel like the metal hooks are probably better. That was 35. We're increasing 36 and 37. 38. 39. And 40. That's a multiple, so we're going to increase on the next one. And this is going to be, we're almost done. So 41 and 42. 3, 44, 45, increasing, this is the last one, 46, 47, oops, I didn't do the increase in the same one, I'm just going to do it here, but see, you can do that, <laughs> and it'll be fine, 48, 49, it's better when they're evenly distributed, but again, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. All right, so we have done 50. I don't want to just bind off and have this weird uh, lump. So what I do, and I put that as a finish, I do two single crochets and two slip stitches. So a single crochet, if you don't know the how to do that, you're going to go, you're not wrapping. You're just going into the stitch and then wrapping, pulling up. You'll have two loops, pull through. That's a single. So we'll do that one more time. This just kind of gives it the, it decreases the edge a little so it doesn't give you the bump. So you have two loops, pull it through. That's two single crochets. And now a slip stitch, all that is, is you put the yarn in and through. You'll grab the loop. You don't wrap it and you just pull it through. Okay, and you do that. I do it twice. So through, grab the loop, pull it through, and then pull it through that stitch if it wants to go. All right, now what you're going to do is you're going to cut this. I leave a little bit of a tail so I know I can weave it in, okay? When you cut it, you have it loose, you just pull it through, okay? So now you have two tails that you have to kind of weave in. So all I do for that is, I left this one a little long, but that's all right. If you have a bigger eyed tapestry, this, these, all these little eyelashes are such, they're, they're, they're not fun to try to get on a needle. So I have it on my needle and I'm on the, this was the front side and the back side. There is a little bit of a difference, obviously. Um, I kind of just pick a place and go under a stitch there to get it down further. Now that it's down into here a little bit, you can kind of find 
all the legs that went around all the previous. You can kind of see where I'm going under the legs. I just do that a few times. You can pull it through and cut it and be done. You can be more secure and you can do it again under another row. I've honestly never had any of these fall apart on me. That one I showed you in the beginning, that one's kind of coming apart, but it's really old. Okay. I've now I just kind of pull it to, sh you know, so the tail sinks itself in and you'll just trim that off. Okay. Trim it. And it'll work itself into the, your washcloth, your dishcloth, okay? We're going to put this one onto the darning needle. Sometimes you get only part of it. It's, it's a really weird yarn, but these, I can use these for quite a few days before I have to wash them, before they start, like, smelling. Like, sponges... Ugh, and I felt like you'd have to buy new sponges all the time. I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just, that's why you got to leave a little bit of a tail. You want to go under them, under those legs. Okay. You've already captured this. So technically, I guess this isn't needed. I do it anyway. And then just kind of trim it off. And there you go. All right. And that is how, now, if you wanted to make a bigger scrubby, say you wanted to make it bigger, follow the same steps of increasing. So on the sixth round, you would do an increase and then multiples of six. So increase in one stitch and then four single uh, HTCs, half double crochets. And it's multiples of six to get you to 60 because that keeps the evenness of it going increasing. You know, you, you got to increase at a good rate to have it stay flat and not get wavy all right so i'm going to try to get a screenshot here and here is your finished scrubby if you guys make any please 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 tag me on instagram i would love to see the scrubbies you guys are making if you guys use other scrubby yarn also let me know how much you guys like it i've never used any of the others because honestly i like this one a lot so Red Heart Scrubby is my go-to. Here's the pattern that I made up because I liked that it was dense. It's your fingers aren't going through it. It's floppy, but the other one, the other ones I've made were so floppy because you were doing double crochets, not half double crochets. And I just didn't like it. So here's some green ones. These ones I need to weave in some ends. Oh, and see this one's a little bit smaller. This was what was left over from a ball. It was not enough to make a full one, so I made a small one. And if you had more, you just make it a little bigger. Use up all the bits of your yarn. Nobody's going to care how gigantic they are. I mean, I like this size. Again, I'll try to put the measurements of what they're, they are. So happy crocheting, y'all, and thank you for watching. And yeah, leave any comments down below, questions if you have any, if I missed something. I appreciate it very much, and have a great day. Bye.